Now, Jonathan Marshall is the journalist who broke the story in Sydney's Sunday Telegraph, and Jonathan joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Michael, how are you? I'm very well. Now, just let's go back to square one. How did you go about getting to be in that Sydney University Liberal Club dinner in the first place? OK, so I'm not a, uh, a member of the Liberals or any political party for that matter. So what I did about two months ago was contact um, the New South Wales um, Young Liberal um, organisation and just basically signal some interest in possibly joining um, that part of the party. And I didn't really hear anything back until um, a few weeks ago when an email came through from the president um, of the, uh, the Young Libs in the New South Wales area, uh, basically just saying there was an event coming up, um, Alan Jones would be there, it's $100, um, if you'd like to come along, then here's the account number, put some money in and, um, and off I went. Uh, there was no suggestion in, in any of that communication that you needed to be you know, a signed up paid member or that you couldn't be a journalist or in fact that there would be sort of Chatham House rules. So. Uh, the comments yesterday made by Alan Jones that there was, as he put it, a criteria to be there um, are quite unsubstantiated. In fact, he said in that media conference, uh, the MC on the night said specifically, this is Chatham House rules, and, and actually asked were there any journalists in the room. Did, did you hear that? No, and more than not hearing it then, as I've uh, been able to go back and review all of the audio from the night, um, and there was absolutely no mention of that. And just for the avoidance of doubt, um, I wasn't late. I was one of the first there. So the audio that I've got is right from the beginning. No mention of Chatham House rules. But let's just point out, even if there were, I think the public interest in this would you know, greatly override any of those concerns. And we probably would have published anyway. OK, just uh, walk us through that. Why do you think that's justified? I think um, you know, you've got a group of people um, who many of them plan one day to be an MP. There are people in that room who want to be the Prime Minister and lead this nation. Uh, they're there. None of them got up and left when the comments were made. And um, I think that the public have a right to know, you know, A, what Alan Jones said, and B, that these people who want to lead this country thought it was so appropriate that they would remain in the room. Um, that's why. Now, listening to the, the, your audio of the speech, uh, once uh, Alan Jones dropped that uh, infamous comment about the Prime Minister's late father, uh, to the untrained ear, certainly I heard a mixture of both laughter and gasps. How would you describe the general reaction by those in the room once Alan Jones made that, uh, as in his own words, completely unacceptable comment about Prime, mm. the Prime Minister's dad? You'd like to think that most of the people in the room were shocked and sort of gasping, but there is a lot of laughter. Um, I was focused on looking at him at the front of the room, so uh, it would you know, be a bit disingenuous of me to try and um, tell you how many people were upset and how many thought it was great. Um, but I think we come back to the point, no one left the room. And that includes, it's not just these young people, that includes um, MPs themselves. Now, uh, you were at that media conference yesterday. In fact, you had a little uh, exchange of sorts with uh, Alan Jones at the very end. What did you make of what I thought was a, a rather extraordinary rambling performance by the broadcaster? So 45 minutes and not one mention of that word sorry. And mm. it is the hardest word to say, isn't it? And it seems for Alan Jones um, that is quite true. OK, and uh, he uh, was there at the end uh, having, having a go at you for, for not identifying yourself in the media conference, which, was, uh, which I found pretty bizarre as well. Mm. So he didn't actually know until the very end of his press conference yesterday that I was present, um, and he accused me of not identifying myself, which I thought was strange given that I didn't see any other journalists identify themselves yesterday. Um, in terms of the allegation that um, I misrepresented myself in terms of getting into the uh, actual Young Libs event, well that again is another falsehood because the email communications between me, which were sent from my private email address through to the President of the New South Wales Young Libs, um, Alex Dorr, um, are under my name and um, there was no misrepresentation and News Limited, uh, especially in the current climate, takes all that sort of thing quite seriously and I wouldn't have been given uh, the green light to go ahead and um, enter that event under a different name. Yeah, OK, it was under your name, but uh, you, you pulled in your employer there. Was it Jonathan Marshall, you know, journalist, Sunday Telegraph, in your email signature or, or just your name? Well, I, I don't typically, from my Gmail account, sign off my emails like that. Um, did I disclose that I was a journalist? No. But did anyone else that was there disclose whether they were a plumber or a student or unemployed? Um, quite irrelevant. Given that it was an event open to anyone who wanted to go along and pay $100, I did that. 
Alan Jones appears to have been caught out. He might not like that, but at the end of the day, I was entitled to be there just like anybody else. Now, uh, you have a follow-up story this morning about the potential cost to 2GB uh, regarding some sponsors expressing uh, some uh, distaste for, for what went on there. So I, I don't think this is um, sort of unpredicted. Um, this is the sort of thing that happens when Kyle Sanderlands has a slur and will probably go on, I would have thought, for you know, quite some time. And it's, it's interesting to note, isn't it, that Alan Jones has a share in 2GB, so he'll, um, he'll feel this not just as a, a reputational thing, but possibly in the pocket as well. Uh, I think there is, especially if you look on Twitter uh, this morning, a lot of pressure on a lot of advertisers. And I guess um, depending on how much pressure continues to mount will be whether they sort of subside and um, pull their advertising. I mean, it has been noted this morning and, um, in, our, in the Daily Telegraph and around the News Limited Network that a number of advertisers already have pulled out. And you've got some big names um, like Harvey Norman uh, is one of the ones that comes to mind. And, you know, people will be looking at them today and saying, do you support these comments? Because, you know, people on Twitter seem to, to, seem to think that if you support him by giving him advertising dollars, then you're supporting the comments he made about um, the late John Gillard. And for many, that's uh, probably an, quite an inappropriate sort of thing.